Hi, welcome to Tiny Piano Club. Uh, I am Zach, and this is Becca. So last week I was listening to a podcast because that's what 32-year-olds do, and it was Dear Hank and John, which is a podcast that's put together by my very dear friend John Green and his brother, who's not my dear friend, Hank Green. And it's an advice podcast, and so listeners write in with their questions to hear what advice that John and Hank might have for them. I was looking at the title of last week's episode, and I was terrified to listen to it because it was called Should I Get Baptized If I Don't Believe? The question came from a person whose mother had recently married some sort of Christian minister, and now her mother really wants her 20-year-old daughter to be baptized. I think that's a really interesting question. It's an onion with a ton of layers. And so today I thought we would have a conversation about what advice we would give this person. So Becca, what do you think? It sounds to me like the only reason she would be doing this is to please her mom. And in that case, I don't think she should get baptized. Um, because if that's literally the sole reason, then she's not living for herself. And I think that's important no matter what. But if she has some curiosity about what baptism can mean, and she's wondering about how it will affect herself as well as her mother, then I think that's what she needs to look into it more and say, okay, what is baptism going to mean to me if I do that? Should she just settle for a septum ring? <sighs> My piece of advice is to talk to the minister. Mm. Right? And I know that's not an easy thing to do, right? And that, that makes me... I'm disappointed that there's a lot of complexity in the understanding of what a minister is and stuff, but yeah. if you can feel out the minister enough that you can see whether it might be a comfortable thing to have this conversation with them, I think that may be one of the most helpful things to do. Yeah, I agree. I think the conversation with the minister, um, especially since she's not going to have that mother-daughter bond in that conversation, I think that gives her more agency in her decision. Because I think if she talks to her mom about it, it goes into a circular thing of like, okay, I'm just doing it to please my mom. And I think moving to the minister is going to give her more freedom to decide for herself. So I think those two work hand in hand. That's cool. I think in the that triangle of, of people, the person who's most likely to be most empathetic to the, to the, to the daughter is the minister. Yeah. Right? Because... As a religious professional, these things happen from time to time, and I would not be offended by that question, and I'm not going to rat out the daughter to the mother. Right. But that together we could work through the situation. Perhaps it's even a bonding piece with this new stepfather, uh, yeah. a way to build that relationship as well. But maybe there's a way you can sit down, he can hear what you have to say, hear your perspective, and then you guys can work it out together to figure out what is the best thing to do in that situation. Yeah. I think the thing here is the relationship between the daughter and the mother. Mm -hmm. And that my advice from my, my, my tradition's baptismal theology is that God does all the work in baptism. And so the baptism doesn't work or not work whether we believe or don't believe. And so if this person has some sort of respect for the liturgy, respect for the ritual or the tradition, and doesn't want to, to be disrespectful to it because she doesn't believe, I don't think that needs to be a worry. Because I would say even for folks who desire baptism, it's not whether they believe in it or believe in certain things that makes it uh, a good and life-giving thing, I think. Uh, but it, you can't mess it up. Yeah, exactly. Because we would have already messed it up right, a totally. lot because of our human humanness. Yeah. So what do we got? I think what we have here is, number one, that individuality is really, really important in this situation. So if this person's sole reason for considering baptism is just to please her mother, then I don't think that's a good reason to get baptized. Number two, get a septum piercing, despite what your parents may say. Number three... Consider talking to the minister. They're probably going to be the most empathetic person uh, in the situation. And number four, do not worry about breaking the ritual. So now the big question, Becca, what would you do? I think with no religious background, I would probably not do it. 
I probably wouldn't get baptized, um, which is a bummer to say that. Um, but I don't think I would. I just, I'm very fortunate to have the religious background I do, because for me, my baptism is very important to me, and it's made me a lot of who I am. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think that by the time I'm 20 and I've like created all my own opinions, I would be able to say yes at that point, unfortunately. So what would you do in this situation? Would you get baptized even if you're 20 years old and you have no religious background at this point? Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. My perspective on this as a pastor is that I'm most concerned about the daughter's relationship with the mother. Mm -hmm. That combined with my desire to avoid all conflict means I definitely would mm -hmm. do it. I definitely would do it. I don't think it hurts anything uh, theologically to sure. do that. And I suspect it just feels to me like the question is so loaded that there's so much emotional weight in this baptism for the mother. And so I think the most helpful thing for that relationship is probably just to go ahead and get baptized. You're not risking anything. You're not losing anything. Um, and that maybe you want to start to think about how you can more effectively communicate the things you believe or don't believe. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's the other thing that, that I think we hear in the white spaces around this question is that they haven't had this conversation before. Right. I don't think the mother would ask genuinely if the daughter had clearly uh, communicated with her mother and mother knew how she felt about religious stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's not a fair situation for her to be in, but it also, I think we have to admit that she's probably a little bit complicit in getting to this space. So we are curious to hear what you would do in this situation. Uh, let us know in the comments down below what you would do if you were in this context or just what advice you would give to this person if you were to have a conversation with them. Uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe. New videos every Tuesday and Friday right here on Tiny Piano Club. <laughs>